So here we are with Susanna Fuller, the Marine Conservation Coordinator of the Ecology Action Center in Halifax, Nova Scotia. They have been a member of the DSCC since 2005. So Susanna, yesterday I spoke with Matt Gianni and he talked a little bit about the UNGA resolutions on bottom trawling and protecting vulnerable marine ecosystems on the high seas. Could you talk a little bit about how the implementation has been, where it's hit the water, so to speak? Sure. Um, so I, I work in Canada um, and the um, Regional Fisheries Management Organization, which is the long name for um, how we manage fisheries on the high seas. So really countries get together and countries are called contracting parties and they all work together to um, manage fish stocks on the high seas. And so NAFO is the organization I um, have been going to meetings and working with since 2005 um, on, on behalf of the conservation organization I work for. Um, so, NAFO, prior to 2006, NAFO um, did not deal at all with the marine ecosystem above and beyond fish stocks. And NAFO is probably most notoriously known for the fact that the cod stocks completely collapsed. And um, that's kind of where NAFO sits in terms of its uh, success at regulating high seas fisheries. However, since the UNGA resolution, NAFO has made, I would say, um, what we would call a bit of a regime shift. Um, um, starting in 2008, they um, identified areas of vulnerable marine ecosystems as defined by the FAO guidelines. So we looked at corals, um, sponges, uh, deep sea fish species, spawning grounds, canyons, seamounts. Um, and over the last, um, since 2006 and since the identification of those areas in 2008, NAFO has closed a total of 17 areas. Um, that include seamounts, corals, and sponges. So really, they've only focused or concentrated on management measures on benthic environments um, that are sessile, but don't move. So we haven't seen much progress on things like um, spawning grounds, on canyon areas, and nothing for deep sea fish stocks. And there's um, many deep sea fisheries in the, in the Northwest Atlantic that have really been fished to extirpation um, to very, very low levels without ever even having a fishing quota. So that's what happens when you target one species and you have a bycatch of another 25 species. What happens like with the grenadiers, which have really been decimated um, by bottom trawling, mm -hmm. yet have never had a quota set or any management measure. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, kind of, we have closed areas on the high seas. Um, the first closed areas on the high seas for sponges in the world, which I'm quite excited about because um, I studied sponges for my PhD. Um, and some high seas closed areas for corals. So good things, um, but still not full implementation of the resolution. And one of the interesting things um, that the Deep Sea Conservation Coalition has looked at in our recent review of how RFMOs and states um, have implemented the resolution is that states don't act the same. They act differently in different parts of the high seas. So as conservationists, um, and I think as most citizens of, of the world, think of the high seas as the common heritage of humankind. And we assume that states will behave the same, that there's the same set of rules on the high seas that everybody has to abide by. But what's interesting is that states don't abide by the same set of rules. They decide um, where they're going to implement um, especially with the UNGA resolution, and where they're not. And so while we may have some progress in the Northwest Atlantic, the same countries who fish in the South Pacific are not um, protecting areas. Um, across the board, we have a real problem with countries submitting impact assessments. Uh, one of the things that I think many people don't know is that for all the activities that happen on the ocean floor, fishing is the one that's exempt from environmental impact assessment. And um, that's really not acceptable anymore. And I think that's, you know, particularly in the high seas, we're expecting that environmental impact assessments happen and that countries submit those environmental ass impact assessments, whether they're fishing in the North Atlantic, the South Pacific, in the Antarctica. Um, and that's something coming up for the UNGA review in September. We'll really be um, looking to states to make sure that their performance improves and that it's, um, there's some coherence across, really, the, the global um, commons on the high seas. Um, so in short, you know, I think really interesting times in terms of improving governance on the high seas, but we've got a long way to go um, in terms of really protecting deep sea ecosystems, which are incredibly fragile and, and we know so little about in many ways, but we know enough to do the right thing. Great. Susanna Fuller, Ecology Action Center, thank you so much. You're welcome.